the game gets underway here at East End Park and Dunfermline are playing against a very strong southwesterly wind. It's time to throw to Dunfermline to be taken by Bowes. Comes down to McFarland. And it's pushed away by Dave McPherson. throw from Bowes, well picked up by Alan McLaren, and John Miller came down there, the challenge came from Billy Davis, this is a free kick to Don Fermelin, taken by Davis, There's the dummy. That's the opener. That's the opener for Dunfermline. Just over a minute gone here at East End Park. The free kick from Davis, giving Henry Smith no chance, and it thundered into the back of the net, giving Dunfermline a 1 0 lead. Ferguson through to Mackay now with John Robertson breaking down the right side good tackle there for Williamson he goes out of play for the throw to Hart the throw from Mackay it's down to Ferguson pushed into the box cleared away by Cooper and Derek Ferguson pushing forward he's got John Robertson he's given the chance for Hart but it's pushed away by Andrew Williamson. Well, this is a corner to Hart. Derek Ferguson, high ball into the box. Comes down at the head of McPherson and is netted by Graham Hogg. And that's the equaliser. The replacement for Craig Levine. And the goal came after Derek Ferguson took the corner kick, came down inside the box. And that's equaliser for Hearts. Dunfermline won, Hearts won. And 11 minutes gone. Here's a breakthrough now for Eamon Bannon. Just comes down to Robertson. And that was a chance just going over. Down to Ferguson with Mackay to Miller. Mackay breaks into the box. Give it a chance. It's pushed away by Rhodes. John Robertson had the chance, but Rhodes came down, lost the ball. That could have been dangerous for Dunfermline. Being pressurizing football. There's a header from Robertson. A push wide by Andy Rhodes, a great save by Rhodes. Ferguson. Forwards to Robertson. A bit of a chance for Hearts. No one there to pick it up, but it comes back out to Gary Mackay. Through to Crab. Pushed away again, and they tried to get in there, but it's back out to Mackay again on the right wing. The high ball from Mackay came off the head of Cooper. There's Ferguson, the corner, down off the head of Ferguson, and that came off the crossbar. The corner from Ferguson to Ian Ferguson, former Wraith Rovers player and his chance just came over and off the crossbar it's Moyes it's Cooper with Williamson down to McLaren
Robertson. It's it back to Cobb. He tries to get in there, but Cooper's there first, puts it out of play. And this is a free kick to Hart. Hart wanting to take it. Worked well with his senior colleagues all season. High ball into the box. Going by Ferguson. There's a chance for McPherson. And a tremendous save from Andy Rhodes, former Oldham Athletic keeper, in on form today. Taken by Derek Ferguson. The ball into the box. Headed in by Miller. The way there's a chance for Grant. disappointment for Crabbe but Dave McPherson with his second chance of the match for Hearts pushed over by Andy Rhodes it certainly looks now like this game will go to a replay at Tynecastle a disappointing second half but less than two minutes to go here at East End Park in the Scottish Cup fourth round tie between Dunfermline and Hearts. They both tied at 1 1. There's a chance for John Miller. Took a deflection and Scott Pratt got in there. And well, that's certainly a shot for Dunfermline now. A late goal by Scott Pratt, the substitute, gives Hearts the lead. turn around with so little time left and Crabbe came in and has ruined Dunfermline's chances he's got Crabbe 3-2 right but it goes out of play for a throw and Joe Jordan taking a look at his watch and there goes the final whistle Hearts are through to the quarter-finals of the Scottish Cup. The open-up for Dunfermline came after 90 seconds. Billy Davis, the former St. Mirren striker, was the scorer. The equaliser came in 11 minutes from Graham Hogg. And then in 88 minutes, Scott Crabb put Hearts ahead. And they'll go into tomorrow's draw. The final score from East End Park. Dunfermline won. Adam and Lothian too. Joe, you're through to the quarter-finals and you kept your 100% record intact against Dunfermline. Certainly a good day for Hearts. Yes, yeah, at the end. I thought uh, we got the result that we, we deserved in our, uh, our performance. I think uh, it was a credit to our lads because we, we never got the goal until the last minute. And we had a lot of pressure, but we showed a lot of composure. And uh, I thought we deserved the result in the end. And that late goal from Scott Crabbe, certainly a cracker. Oh, it was a good goal. I think any goal, any goal at that particular time in the match, was a, you look at it and you're a heart supporter, it's a great goal. Uh, we had a lot of possession and pressure and had chances, but we hadn't really breached it uh, until the end. And uh, as I said, getting a goal at the end is a killer really for, for the opposition because there was no time really for them to come back. In the next round, who would be your ideal opponents? Well, so far in the Scottish Cup, we've played two ties away from home against Premier League teams. So I've Keep our fingers crossed and hope that we get uh, a little home time. That's all really that, that we can ask for. And uh, with two being away from home, I think we're due a little break. Let's move. We'll see whether we can oblige a little bit later for you, Joe. As uh, he points out, though, Billy, two Premier victories, uh, two victories against Premier clubs. Uh, that's, he's got to be pleased about that. Well, that's right. He survived uh, an opening goal for Dunfermline as well, which is, uh, which is important to, to get back into the game. Um, I thought they played well in the game and were perhaps unlucky that it took them so long to get in front. Mm. But, uh, you know, in cup ties, you never worry about how long it takes you to get in front, as long as you get in front and stay there. I think our major problem yesterday might have been coming back from the south of France to that cold <laughs> wind that we had. <laughs> what do you feel about taking clubs away mid-season for a break like that? Well, uh, it worked for me in the past, and uh, I, I think it can often be beneficial. But it's like everything else. If the, you come back to the game and you don't get a result, you get criticised for it. But I think it can, can work, and when it does work, everybody tells you how clever you are. <laughs> well, it certainly worked for Harris yesterday.